like sonar on your AUV, so it's gonna have to be a very high frequency, probably like 200 or 400 kilohertz. And so if you're looking at that, you're gonna wanna be no more than 300 meters off of the seafloor. Mm. Um, but you're still getting pretty wide coverage, probably four times water depth or so, or not water depth, your yeah. altitude. I haven't done very, or actually, I haven't done any mapping with an AUV. Um, so I don't have very much context. Yeah, I'd be very curious to know where the state of the technology is these days. When you guys map with the Norbit, Go for zoom. you get really high resolution. resolution. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. It's like uh, that's centimeters. A, it's a 400 kilohertz. Well, okay. you can adjust it. But, but it you fly really close around. to the sea floor. Yeah. yeah, like 20 meters off mostly is what you're okay. doing. Okay. Cucumber. Cucumber. That makes Cucumber. sense. I've done a 400 kilohertz to 200 with an ROV. But the blue exactly view is like 1.2 meg or something like that. Oh, like wow. super high frequency. Wow. That's cool. Um, but you know, you're that's like uh, a couple three meters off the seafloor. Yeah, and so the big like trade off there. Ten at most. Yeah, and then the trade off there is time too, right? So, yeah. 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 So for the blue view, we were like, and I think you can do this pretty well with the Norby too. Uh, you know, doing centimeter level sort of mapping, trying to push the envelope for. Because at, at those sort of resolutions, you're not limited by your instrumentation so much as you're limited by your ability to uh, resolve your position. So you're limited by your navigation. Your sonar is much more precise than your ability to know where you took the sonar measurement. Bridge so that enough. happens when you get down to those like very, very small measurements. Uh, can we keep this move going? 50 meters, 335. Thank you. Yeah, that's where, like, the your setup is so critical when you're doing that really high-resolution stuff and making sure you're, all your sensors, your heading, your depth, your position of all the sensors is so critical Time. to kind of lining it all up. Right, and then after that, you still have to do a whole bunch of math to get the all of your measurements to line up. You end up reprocessing your nav to line up all the measurements where you've seen the same place twice. Um, it's called simultaneous localization and mapping. It allows you to get those like centimeter and sub-centimeter level sort of observations. Go for zoom. Good shot of the crust layer there. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's see a great view. Layer of crust, and then I think this is what we had earlier in the day. It was just this consolidated mud, easily scratchable, pretty friable stuff.
bunch of debris. More sponge debris. Seems like the sponge debris is forming most of this rubble field with kind of this fine organic material silt sediment. Okay, go ahead. Go for Zoom. Nice sea cucumber. I used to be pretty good with the name of these things, and then I stopped studying them for a while, and then I forgot all the names. Stop studying them for what? I, I, I used to like Holothurians. Go what? They were my favorite group for a while. Oh, really? What did you like about them? What do you like? I think that they're, oh. they're like... You should go back and watch him some more. If, if you saw a show on Discovery Channel or something about the most extreme creatures in the world, this would probably not be on them. Okay, soon. But for me, it would be. They have... What's so extreme about them? They... They, they live at some of the most extreme depths on the planet, eating some of the most nutrient-poor food on oh, the planet. Oh, really? Okay. But they get so big, and they have such a striking presence, um, you know, with the different colors, and sometimes they're translucent, sometimes they're swimming. Yeah. Uh, they have all sorts of, like, parasites and things that live inside and around them. Um and they just keep and on they, they eke out uh, an existence like yeah. that. I'm with you, Steve. I'm a big fan. I like watching them swim. It's pretty silly. Me too. It's so <laughs> fun. It's another one on my list where I'm like, we could just dive and watch one sea cucumber the whole dive. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be very entertaining for me. Um, up off the, off the coast of Vancouver Island, there's a whole bunch of sea pigs. And like you can have little sea pig races. You just watch them like trucking along. That sounds great. Yeah, they're pretty weird looking. And it's uh, really fun to watch them poop. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go zoom. Right before they take off. Just like oh a bird. yeah. Just like birds. Yeah, exactly. Little rebalancing. It's like a small cusk eel of some type. Maybe one of the small. Um, you can push in a little more. Oh. Little shrimp friend. I think this is a canth. Okay, go wide.
Go for Zoom. Is that a cucumber? It's, yeah, it's in the really thing. Really very sure is. Yeah, it's, it looks like a small one. Huh. Smaller. Okay, go on. Pretty unusual one. Do, did okay. we get a good enough image of that? Yeah, I think that's fine. Oh. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Huh. Mm. Bridge, Nav. Can we move 50 meters, 335? Thank you. When you look to the left, there's a stalk in the sediment. We just passed it. Lower left here. Oh, I what see what is. you're looking at. I just want to make sure it's not a sea pen. It looks like it might be some sort of sponge talk. Is it a spoon worm? Or, yeah, possibly a zoom? worm tube. Sorry. Covered in hydroids. Looks like a, a worm tube. An old worm tube. Now no longer occupied. Saw something very similar to this. Um Okay, go yeah, on. Thanks. I saw something very similar to this. Um, off Costa Rica, except the, the strands, the little fibers, we said we thought we were hydroids were coming off of it, were fluorescent green. Oh, Whoa. wild. And uh, we never figured out what it was. They didn't have the morphology of hydroids. So we, we were still trying to do the sequencing on that to try and figure out what it was. Looks like this rock overlays like very loose sediment. And that the rock just breaks as the sediment erodes underneath it. Yeah, that makes sense. Pretty crusty. Makes me think of cake. <laughs> Is it that part of the watch where we start seeing food and everything? Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We're it's taking less in. and less time each <laughs> each watch. One hour in. I forgot uh forgot the goods today. <gasps> Sorry everyone. That's all right. They're down in the data lab. I don't have many more left though. So we can either have them now or we can have them. I got some chocolates I can later. bring. I think we definitely did a good job of turning those chocolates into bagged peaks. Yeah. Definitely. And science done. And science.
What's that poking out there? Two little fingers. Oh. Oh, this underneath the rock? Yeah. Yeah. Sea star, maybe? Oh, yeah. Go for zoom. Yeah, sea star just wow. tucked under oh. there. That was good eyes. Yeah, seriously. Uh, I don't know okay. if we can do Go anything wide. with that for an ID. What's that? I don't know if we can do anything with that for an ID. It's yeah, it's pretty critical well ahead. To have the center of it. It's probably five, five armed. Okay, I'm gonna hop out of my chair for a moment and check on the 360 camera, if that's okay with y'all. Yeah, that sounds great. What's this, uh, oh, just I've the... Seen... It's I've seen this guy once before. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna have to zoom. Urchin? I'm gonna zoom in the old-fashioned way. That would be a big urchin. Yeah, more than 10 centimeters across. What is that? I think it's a sponge. Want to zoom? Josh, can you give yep. me a zoom? Yep. It is an urchin. Yeah, good call. It's an urchin? Yeah. Wow. It actually might be the test of an urchin, but I don't know. The what? The, it, the test, like the, the shell. Okay. Yeah, because you can see these these radial lines coming out. Yeah. So it's an urchin test. I don't know if it's alive. Um, but doesn't it look like it's the color, that oh, iridescence of a sponge, right? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the, the, these radii coming out. Yeah, yeah. The, the pentaradial symmetry. Ah, uh, yes. I don't know. It might be multiradial symmetry. Oh, okay, yeah. go on. You're right. Uh, but yeah, I, I haven't seen anything like that. The fact that it's wedged in a crevice should suggest that maybe it is just the test. That's cool. But that's, yeah, those things are so fragile. Those pancake urchins, the tests are so fragile, they're almost more like tissue paper sometimes. Oh, oh really? So wow. to see it intact like that huh. is pretty striking. Yeah, they, they tend to collapse under their own weight if you were to bring them up to the surface uh, and take oh, them wow. out of water. Turning out to be a little bit of a surprising dive, maybe not from a coral and sponge perspective, but from a general invertebrate biology perspective here. And there's some pretty cool mud and rocks. We've been seeing a lot of like super static like mud and rocks and here it's all like recently collapsing and changing. Yeah. Recently could be hundreds or thousands of years too. <laughs> it's kind of neat to think about. Yeah. Oh, some life. Nav. Go for zoom. A little dark. Same move, 50 meters, 335. Thank you, Paul. It looks like there might be a shrimp on this crinoid. Somewhere on the stalk.
You can oh, go in a little closer. Something else. No, it's a Tina 4. That's it's a Tina 4? Ben benthic Whoa. Tina 4, yeah, on the stalk. There's two of them. One, two, and if you look closely, they, you can see the tentacles streaming off. Yep, two benthic tenophores. This is the first time I've actually seen one, uh, or Go rather, closer? Um, I've seen them on a crinoid stock before. Oh, I see the tentacles. Yep. Okay, go wide. They're in the genus Tealfiella. We did collect one a bit earlier. How? Um, it was collected... Uh, slurped up from a sponge or, or a coral, oh, I neat. think. Yeah. I think it was a sponge. Tealfiella, the genus with a T silent J. Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. Hey, buddy. Bunk. I've only ever seen those Tina fours, I guess, like really clear Tina fours, you know, that have a the light pulsing through them. Does that same thing happen in the benthic tenophores? Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, say that again? Like, like the I've seen, I'll show you a picture of these, like the clear tenophores, like the comb jellies, where there's, sometimes there's like light pulsing through. Oh yeah, the, 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 iridesc the iridescence, yeah. Does that happen in the in the benthic tenophores too? They I'm sure they not it have could. that same like feature? Yeah. I'm sure it could. I mean, they, by by definition, they have to have the same type of structures. Uh, they may not be as good at producing the iridescence. Um, I've never really looked in detail at the benthic ones. The benthic ones tend to be more pigmented. Uh, sometimes they're even opaque, um, depending on their size. So it, they're probably not as iridescent as um, some of the midwater ones. But this, they'll still have that comb feature. Yes, yeah. yeah. Mm. That's cool. I've never seen one of those. Or a benthic one. Yeah, the one in the upper right there. So that that's one of those like really opaque ones. Yeah, you oh. couldn't see the probably couldn't see the the teens, the comb rows for those. But oh, maybe some of these other ones like the that picture in the lower right. The, this that one. one? Yeah. If you oh, can yeah. see it there, you, you that's pretty much exactly what we saw. Huh, those are so cool. Yeah, that was spotted at 3,700 meters. Uh, it's a, it's also interesting to note that a lot of the tenophores that are in the midwater are probably also bioluminescent. And I don't think there's really anything well understood about if the benthic ones are also bioluminescent. Mm. There has to be some sort of advantage, but a lot of the um, the midwater ones may be using their bioluminescence for signaling purposes, but it seems like the benthic tenophores um, are fairly okay. passive feeders, so they extend these fishing tentacles that st are sticky. And then they'll capture food on there. Ooh, tiny little sponge. Okay, go wide. Thank you, video. I recall uh, there was a, well, this is probably several years ago, uh, on the Okeanos Explorer, they looked at benthic tenophore tentacles that were in excess of three meters. Whoa. Whoa. They followed it all the way along. Huh. Extraordinary for such a small little animal. This slope supposed to pick up again, or um, it yeah, looks like it. yeah. The more we go up slope, the more it will get 
okay. Seaver will get. That's what I'm trying to say. What's our rock sampling depth? Good question. We are looking for 3381. Okay. It's another 60 meters. And it, you guys don't want. Can we, can we go this back to look at this again? This yeah. We just yeah. looked at that. Are we nearing the end of a move? Um, I can stop the ship. It'll take a bit. Yeah. Can shop. we see if this one has those same hairs? Because I might want to sample this. Okay. I, I regretted my decision last time. Bridge, nav. This Go could for be a, like a pluck and slurp. You think a slurp? Hold ship, uh, please, let, for a sample collection. Okay, let's take a look it does have the same hairs. Yes. Uh, okay. Then we're going to do like a pluck and slurp. Yeah. Okay, go wide. Yeah, if we're going to sample this, we may have to move the ship back towards us. Okay. Otherwise, we're going yeah. to just pass. We're pretty well laid back at the moment. Should we give it a try, Josh? Yeah, we can try and go quickly, but you might I'll go for it. You might even just be able to, like, grab a, grab it and then slurp it in the midwater. I'll go ahead and move us back. Okay, bridge now. Sorry, I got it. Can we make a move in the reverse direction? 30 meters bearing 155. Just 30 meters, but yes, bearing 155. So what, sorry, Steve, what? It's it's right here. What's your, um, Thank you. what's your thought here for sampling it? You, you can just grab it, um, you know, just grab low it. to the sediment, yeah. Okay. Grab a lump of it. I'm not particularly interested in the depth of it, just want to get a piece. Um, it's a little, I would, I would recommend most of your, like last time we had trouble with the, the, um, that last sample, cause this spot is quite difficult to get to. Oh, I see. Okay. Like I'd sort of, like I can't quite get, yeah. I can't even really get there. Maybe I can. Hold on. But it's like I a see what really challenging spot. You sort of want to get more center in the, in the ROV okay. when you're doing something smaller. Can we zoom in, please? Um, I'm going to snip it that way, though, right? Yeah, that's fine. That's okay? Yep. Okay. It's probably made out of mud, so it's not going to require much strength. Um, which sample jar do we want? Um, any of them are fine. One would be great. Don't we have? Uh, oh no, we didn't. We didn't slurp it, right? Yeah, it's on, still yeah. on the rock. It's still on the rock. Do we want a closer zoom on this? Uh, if you have time, yeah. Sure. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Yeah, yeah, this is good. Yeah, that's really good. This is exactly the thing that we were trying to figure out what the... There's something else on there, it looks like, too. Yeah, it's like a scale worm or something. Oh, yep, yeah. there's a scale worm. There also might be some small gastropods. Oh, yeah. we, we are yep. set up for the slurp. All right, yeah, yeah this is good. Yep, we can good. go. This is very good. This tells me that the thing we saw off Costa Rica is not a one-off. It's just different colored. Okay, ready? Sure. Yeah, 
try that, I guess. Yep, go for it. Oh, there, there it is. is. Okay. Okay, I think we can get the ship moving back the other way. Bridge nav. Turn all that off. We're going to return to our original direction. Can we move 50 meters bearing 335? That, that, you can just write worm stock. Yeah. We'll figure out what the animal is that's on there Copy, later. Copy, thank you. Very fast, Josh. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Back in the, when I first started coming out, that was what yeah, you had to do something. every single oh. time. <gasps> Whoa. Can you come up? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, there, there. Just a little ahead of me. Yep. That's all. A little low. I don't know what I first thought that was. Shark? <laughs> Can we it's scarier uh, than a shark. Tilt up a bit. Thank you. What's on your mind there? Oh, the sorry. I was just uh, uh, saying. Oh, tilt, tilt I thought past you the, thought um, maybe there was no, a, no, sorry. a snag or something. To reframe. I thought you were looking at those scour marks and Argus coming up. Oh, yeah. Look at I'll that. See those? Huh. Those look like those beaked whale scours. Yeah. What depth are we at? It's still so crazy to me. It's so deep. Yeah. Uh, there are mammals to be coming down. The crazy thing is they do it routinely. Yeah. Do you see those marks we're looking at, Gabby? Uh, just, to your, just to your left. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. They don't look like much down here, like from this perspective here. Oh. Yeah, these look very much not fresh. But I don't even that's, see. That's kind of it's it's right here. Yeah, oh, this yeah. one. But that's definitely what they look like in Argus. You can usually see them all yeah. over the place. Interesting. Not fresh. Yep. There's a line of them though. Good eye. Yeah, there's another right there. Looks like they're filling in with some sediment, too. I guess it's just crazy to me that energy efficiency-wise, it makes sense to dive this deep for food. So there's got to be some really like high nutrient. This one's deep. Oh, here's a yeah. here's oh, yeah. a something. Yeah, that that's a clear one. Wow. Yeah, so I, you think this is mammalian? Yeah, that's I I do think so. I mean, they're it's kind kinda of wild. They're if it was a slump, you would expect it to be the other direction, right? It's we're thirty four hundred meters <laughs> deep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> insane. Well, that, they they're known yeah. to go, you know, three thousand plus meters sometimes. That's Is bonkers. It, would they be eating something? Like, could, could they be eating sea cucumbers? <laughs> go for oh, zoom. No. If I could have a conversation with one, I would. <laughs> what are you eating down here? Uh, what are you? Do you think they would take multiple? They must that much energy. They must take multiple bites at a yeah. dive, right? The other, yeah. Well, I mean, so that's one idea. The other idea that I've heard tossed around is that they actually don't feed uh, in the benthos. They feed somewhere in the water column, yeah. but uh, they might come down here and. Oh, what? 
um, you know, use the seafloor to like dust off parasites or something like that, or you know, like clean themselves. Okay. That's, you know, so abrasive. Come, come down, have some food along the way. A little yep. cleaning at the bottom. Yeah. Head back up. Wow. Yeah. That's that's remarkable. Yeah. Or, you know, they're mammals. They could just be playing. I was just say, make an art down in the sediment or something. Huh? <laughs> you never know. Yeah. I mean, they also find them in nodule fields out in the Clary and Clipperton zone. So, you know, they that that's deeper. That's 4,000 yeah. plus. Clary and Clipperton is <laughs> super deep, yeah. yeah. It's so, so wild. Yeah, I, I mean, it's almost mythic at this point. We see so much evidence of them, or we attribute so much evidence to them. I presume. But we've never seen one. Ever. Yeah. Oh. I have never seen one. Uh, that's <laughs> that's <laughs> wild. Jesus. That's so great. It's only a flesh wound. Sad. <laughs> oh, my leg. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, go wide. <laughs> So wild. That, that was the target of the beaked whale. Just oh. yeah, exactly. <laughs> one, got that one, one arm. Leg. You guys like, whew, just what escaped that one. Survivor. <laughs> Echinoderms have incredible regenerative powers. Regenerative. So it looks like it was already growing back one of its arms. Look at that, you can see a little trail down to whatever that guy is. This is the most fun I've ever had in soft sediment. What's that there, guy? <laughs> what's that? What's that in the bottom left corner? Oh, there? the so thing that looks that like made it's that at trail. the bottom of a trail. Yeah, totally. This one? No, yeah, other the one just oh, the, yeah. the Yeah. It looks like a rock. Is that, rock. Is that just a rock? It oh, may be. Does that oh. mean there's a steep, steep cliff? Yeah. Gosh, I hope so. You can see here, though, this starburst shape pattern. Yeah. Oh, for zoom? That's also yeah. an oh, icky area. Oh, yeah. This is just a rock. What? But looks these starbursts are cool. The beaked whale dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it rolled down to that spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the starbursts are what now? They're uh, echiurin burrows, or uh, they're a type of worm tube. Uh, similar to the spoonworm we saw okay. uh, the, creating those Go mounds, ahead. but instead of... Okay. Um, Thanks, Steve. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. Instead of making a mound, these kind of just scrape off the top bit of sediment in a starburst-shaped pattern around their burrow, mm -hmm. uh, ingesting the organic material. I imagine them being all over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> just really big ones. <laughs> Starburst. Space worms. Yeah. I don't Obviously. Know, if if you if there was any sort of convergent evolution, I think it would be probably an alien life form that's a worm or an arthropod. Yeah. In my opinion. Totally. They well, I feel like in science fiction, everybody seems to lean towards arthropods. Yeah. Um. But is it? They're just very tough, right? They. Like they're every they've. They're on every continent. Yeah, they, they've they succeeded in diversifying many, many species. Um, I think, I don't know what their limitations would be. Size. Size. They can't, get, like, they can't get that big just because of their circulatory and their skeletal Yeah, system. oxygen limit constraints. Yeah, a lot of times in the, uh, what is it, the, Triassic, Triassic and Jurassic, when oxygen levels were higher uh -huh. in the atmosphere, body sizes were larger because they could move oxygen more efficiently into their tissues. Oh, interesting. So you would end up with like albatross-sized dragonflies. Are you serious? Wow. Some, maybe that I, that, that like might be an exaggeration. Okay. I, I'm, I understand yeah. what you're saying, though. Like uh, no, that might be a little bit later. Uh. Giant. So they could get bigger if if they weren't circulation limited. Like yeah. Yeah. Okay. You have to you have to move oxygen, you know, especially when you're a big high energy um 
you know, have high planet taking energy over energy mu musculature, like so the the large nerve fibers and a lot of arthropods require a lot of oxygen. Okay. Um, and if you're a flying arthropod, you probably need a lot of oxygen as well. So having an efficient oxygen delivery system is critical. Don't quote me on the albatross thing. I just think that would be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still thinking it would be really cool if there were starburst worms on the moon. Yeah. Or just starburst. <laughs> or just yeah. starburst. <laughs> that sounds good, too. <laughs> <laughs> I do really like starburst as well. Yeah. There's also that moon hut they haven't <laughs> gotten to yet because it's going to take several months. Yeah. Yeah, any updates on that? Um, it's still a hut. It's still 80 meters away. It's now reached the mainstream media. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do have good updates. <laughs> I, I'm still pretty sure there's a shipping container out there. <laughs> <laughs> Fell off a spaceship. Uh. <laughs> there's tons of shipping containers on the ocean floor. Why not on the moon? There has to be a good explanation for it. For the shipping container on the moon? What, no, but you know, <laughs> the cube. <laughs> Unidentified cube. Oh, I think they're thinking it's a rock. Oh. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, I think, think, I I think saw, it's a boulder. I think I saw a movie about that once. <laughs> Rectangular shaped rock on a foreign body. Okay. 2000, 2001? Yeah. yeah, 2001. Oh, yeah. right, the monolith. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for getting us there, Steves. <laughs> Steves. <laughs> uh, this is actually turning out to be a delightful sediment, like soft sediment yeah. transect. Look at there's more of this like bioturbation, like weird track trails. Here. Switchbacks. Yeah. Do you think that's actually because they struggle to go vertically up this? Or is it just a way to move and eat? I feel like I've seen that same sort of switchbacky pattern even on the flats. Yeah, though. you're right. Bridge, nav? I think it's because they struggle to go straight. <laughs> <laughs> Can we move 50 meters bearing yeah. E V zero? Yeah. Looks exactly like your DVL track. <laughs> I mean, if you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I'm doing that on purpose. I'm doing that because I'm a skilled and thoughtful pilot. <laughs> uh, so I changed our bearing to 330, just five degrees more okay. it's, west. It's and the next one will also be a little bit more west. Sounds good. Or maybe not the next one, but we're making that trend. Okay. It's an interesting notion to think about them going places. Because I. I, yeah. I don't really think about them going places like we go we move to go places. Yeah. But they're probably just looking for food. Yeah. And they can find it anywhere. Yeah. They just need to maximize their you know, food capture abilities. Right. So maybe that's what they're doing. Yeah. Kind of maximizing the amount of surface area they can cover mm. getting fresh organic you know, surface deposits. Yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine them going anywhere. Unless they're going for a swim. <laughs> <laughs> we have not seen a single um, Pelagothuria. This, both of these expeditions, I was kind of disappointed. A single what? Pelagothuria, the, the uh, true midwater sea cucumber. Okay. Oh, saw a ton of them in 2019. Yeah, the ones that like hang out in the water column and like tons and tons and tons of them and look yeah. like just like little tic tacs in the water all over the place. Uh, kind of. Yeah. They look like, like a little umbrella. Oh. Um, okay, that's not what I'm thinking of then. Pelagothuria. And they they're swimming. Yeah. I mean, they, they don't do much swimming. They're pretty passive, but. Okay. Yeah, those. That looks like a spaceship. I remember these now from yeah a couple of years ago. In the yeah. highlights. They're pretty common across the equator. There's a couple of papers about them. 
over the past few years. I think Nautilus data was contributed to. As far as we know, it's the only sea cucumber that lives its an entire life cycle off the benthos. It doesn't interact with the benthos at all. I don't know how this happened. I think it was probably narrating. I was I was narrating um, the Okeanos cruise in 2017 um, in the Phoenix Islands, and for some reason, my name got ingested into the Wikipedia article on Pelagothuria. Uh, <laughs> Ingested. <laughs> Ingested, yeah, by some someone. Uh, oh my goodness. A second observation was made in March 2017 by the same mission off off the Samoan Islands near Howland Island, identified by NOAA expert Steve Oskovich. Hey. Wow, yeah. there you are. I don't I don't want to take credit for that. I was hoping it was gonna say by science Steve. <laughs> Oh, can we look at this anemone? I thought it was a porcupine. Great. We have to look at this anemone. It's the most exciting oh thing we've seen gosh. in a long time. <laughs> okay, go for zoom. Oh, he's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that's very beautiful. That color it's is blue. Amazing. Yeah, this is a... We, we suspect it's a serianthid, so it's related to the... Uh, Forget tu the laser. Tube anemones, or belonging to the tube anemones, Thanks. Um, because it has two distinct rows of tentacles. So one on the outside of the oral disc, and then one on the inside surrounding the mouth. Let's see the inner ring there, outer ring, uh, which oh, is char yeah. characteristic of the serianthids. And um, we did sample this on the last cruise, so we have a really good idea. Um, actually, we sampled. Oh, we sampled one of them. Um, and then there was another one sampled in 2019. Uh, not sure which um, which site it was, but I think it was in the Pacific Remote Islands. But it's a yeah, very interesting critter. Probably a new species. When we are, whenever we get around to describing it. I'll leave that to our scientists ashore. So with these two rows of tentacles, typically, like, the mouth is the whole area, like, within the tentacles. So is it the mouth just within that inner ring yep. there, then? Yeah, okay. just just in the inside. Ashley, did you get a okay shot with the lasers? Yeah, we're good. Thanks. One ring, two ring. Well, yeah. Huh. Okay, go wide. That's really cool. Awesome. That was a beautiful creature. Good for lasers. Thank you. What is that? Hold on, hold on. 
Oh, okay, holding. Oh, I'm back down there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Go for zoom. I have no idea. What is that, Steve? It is a, I think it's a collateralized sponge. So it's a carnivorous sponge. Can we collect this? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. It's kind of Go important. Because I've never seen one ship? like that. It's kind of a big deal. Rich, no? <laughs> kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it has many leather bound books. <laughs> Office smells of All rich mahogany. Rich mahogany, rich. yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to want to get good imagery of this. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's a collateralized sponge, um, but there's nothing. What's your, what's your favorite method for collecting something like this? I don't know, and I think it's super long. Uh, yeah, it is. Do, did you want to try to get some imagery of it in the water column here before yeah, we touch if, down? If we can. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure it's going to. Um. Yeah, let me reapproach it here. Uh, think about how we want to collect it. So, what part of it do you want? <laughs> I'm. I don't know if I can get yeah, all of it. I'm trying to figure that out. Um. Probably below where that orange spotch was. Cause that could be an associate. Okay. Uh, which I think is about half. Might be a tough, a tough uh, collection, but let's see what we can do. So let's see, where's the... Gabby, just thinking about imaging it, is it possible to kind of tuck in on it the right side and turn 90 at it? Oh, I see, for imaging. Mm. I can try, sure. Thanks, Steve, that's a good idea. Yeah, there is nothing in the guides about this, so very valuable collection, potentially. This also might be the best way to get high enough up on it to collect it. Do you want to, um, do you want to snip and slurp it, like put it in a jar? Or is that you think it's going to kind of break it up a little bit? Too yeah, much? I don't, I don't want to risk it. Um, I think we can probably snip it. You know, somewhere below that orange splotch. You know, like there. Yeah. And then try and put it in a drawer? Yeah. Um, we'll have to designate maybe one of the forward bio boxes as kind of the yeah. biology And then repository. probably don't open the drawer again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great spot there. Thanks, Gabby. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. So this what? is a sponge? I th I think this is a clatterized sponge, yeah. Uh, what does that If mean? we can get tight on the top of it. Um, yeah, just a second. I've seen something like this uh, in a paper about carnivorous sponges. Can we do any tighter zoom on the top, or are we just waiting for it to... I'm um, just waiting for it to settle out, okay. and then we'll see what I can do. That's full zoom right there. All right. Can we lose lasers for a second? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks. It really does look like a flower. Mm-hmm. 
come for a wider shot here. Okay, so you're thinking forward bio box? Yeah, yeah, we can snip it below that orange blotch and uh, forward bio box. Thanks yeah, for setting up no that other, shot, Gabby. No other biology. Yeah. I already got it set up for you. Um, we're also at our rock collection depth, so okay. It's quite so should we get the rock that it's on? Did you want to take it? Oh, I'm I'm worried that might be unwieldy. Go for it. In what way? You don't think that'll be unwieldy to get the rock? It would be tough to get. Yeah. You'd put the rock in, but then you'd have to like fold them up. To yeah, I'd rather get the get get the sponge first, and then. Roger. I was thinking after the fact, you could get the base of it. Yeah, yeah, that's but possible. Just yep. not. Yeah, I got us turned a bit. Zoom in, please. Which, uh, are you going below the pink? Yeah. Okay. Just Let's see how far I am. Oh, that's wrapped up tight there. Yeah, I think that, I'm not sure what that is. It does look something wrapped. Can you, I need to see the, yeah, there you go. Can you just come wide for one sec? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I can't, uh, I could maybe I, get I, it, but I can't really get. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I just wanted to see where I was still stretched out there. Yeah, you're still past it. Yeah. Okay, now we'll come in a little tighter. Okay. Pick the flower. All right, we're going to go on the starboard partition side of the forward bio box. Okay. Yeah, you want to do some uh, some close-ups, beauty shots. You can pick your background too. If you hold it up higher, you can get it against <laughs> the dark. Steve might like that. Try that. This is. Not at all a stage shot. Almost looks like. 